the last two or three days, I've been reading this book by Paul Hoffman. This book is about countering the corrupt. And it says here, the what, who, where, why, how to counter corruption. This one. So as I've been reading it, I've noticed some things that I should have noticed but I've not noticed. The major problem in Kenya is not lack of employment, it is corruption. It's not bad health care, it's corruption. It is corruption that causes bad health care. It is corruption that causes lack of unemployment because it takes away opportunities meant for the unemployed. So all these problems, including you know farmers not being able to get their dues or farming not being able to be profitable, it all stems from corruption. If we solve one problem called corruption, we'll fix the problem in Kenya. So now, let's go to class. So we have a problem. I'll ask my cameraman to come closer. This problem is called corruption. See, dear? Ah, yeah. Corruption is equals William Bruto. Now, I'm not saying William Bruto is the only corrupt leader in Kenya. Virtually most of our presidents have been corrupt. You know, ministers in government, PSs, governors, MPs, MCs. But the father currently of corruption, yeah? the Papa le Président de la Office de, is this guy. This guy called William Bruto. He's the father of corruption currently. Now, if this guy stops being corrupt, Kenya can be fixed. Or if this guy gets out of power, by whatever means, the corruption in Kenya will reduce. There's only one problem about removing this guy. So, no, now we are talking about removing the problem. The problem is William Ruto. There's only one problem about removing this guy. Removing this guy is dealing with the symptoms of a disease without dealing with the root cause. Ni kama kukunywa painkiller. Because before you remove William Ruto, you have to ask yourself, who put him there? The person who put him there is someone called a voter. Now, if you remove William Ruto without fixing this guy called the voter, you will bring another Ruto called William Ruto. If you remove William Ruto without fixing this guy called the voter, you bring another guy called William Ruto Pro Max. Ukitoa William Ruto bila kufixi shida, you love a William Ruto Pro Max. Because we are a democracy, and a democracy is organized according to democratic election. That means a president is elected by the voters. If the president is corrupt, it's because the voters wanted it that way. In fact, the 7 million voters cannot say that uh, what I ordered versus what I received. What they ordered is exactly what they received. So then we've known that the problem is a voter. This voter has many problems. This voter, some of them voted because of tribalism. So there are Kalenjins who voted because Ruto is a Kalenjin. There are Kikuyus who voted because Ruto had a running mate with a Kikuyu, who is a Shagwa. So tribalism is a big problem here. All right? Number two about this voter is the problem of bribery. Kuhongwa. And here we are talking about lessors. 
we are talking about wheelbarrows uh, we are talking about cash and other gifts all right now these are the majority of the voters now william ruto did not start being corrupt when he won the presidential election he was corrupt from the beginning people knew he is corrupt they knew his role at the icc but they still voted for him so what is wrong with these people who still voted for this guy expecting the best out of the worst it means to fix kenyans problem we must fix the kenyans to fix kenyans problem we must fix the kenyans why do i say so you see in every corruption scandal there is a lawyer there is an accountant there is a bank teller all these people know what's going on but they don't mind because it's benefiting them meaning those complaining about corruption are those who have not benefited from it or who are not benefiting from it now these people are the few the majority are the poor when you still 10 billion meant for medical equipment for various hospitals across the country the people are going to suffer is not william ruto it's not his friends is not his business partners it is the poor people kwa ground ndo wataumia so how do you fix this voter you fix this voter through civic education the only way to fix this voter is to educate them to open their eyes and sometimes some of the things you are telling them are obvious there are things that they already know but you just need to tell them again that is why i'm always focused on civic education more than protests umeanza kunielewa sasa jo wengine wenu amunielewa mnashindonga ni nini mbaya na mimi sasa today i want to explain to you my thinking eh the reason i'm usually focused on civic education more than protest street protest is because civic education will fix the problem protest may not fix the problem because you might remove this problem and replace with william ruto pro max a bigger problem why because you've not fixed the voter all right even if a military general takes over through a coup or anything they can be william ruto pro max all right so now this civic education how do we do it one way is the vampire diaries what the vampire diaries does is it shows kenyans how corruption affects them simple ule mkenya wa kawaida inamuonyesha vile ufisadi inamo affect how else can we do this civic education word of mouth if you talk to people in your family in your place of work watu wawili tu watatu wenye mnafanya nao job uko nao familia moja if you talk to them by just word of mouth business partners customers you can fix this problem you can talk to them you can give them civic education the other way is through media this media has a problem you might realize that uh, lately i don't go to tv so much that is because there is a problem here media is business and most of the mainstream media they have a relationship with this guy in what sense the government that this guy leads usually advertises through the media and the money they pay for advertising is hundreds of millions if not billions so if they hit too much on this this guy he will deny them the money for advertising the other thing is this mainstream media is regulated by the communication authority of Kenya this communication authority of Kenya is controlled by this guy because he is the head of government all right 
Now, these mainstream media, that's why you see them twisting stories. For example, let me give you a very good example. The governor of Narok hired criminals to come and beat us up. These criminals were not the people of Maroc and they were not Maasai's. And we made it very clear. We just said these are criminals who were hired. The people of Narok had no problem. But when the thing went to media, media twisted it. Media says a group of angry youth attack. They were not even youth. What was the media trying to do? To show that the youth we are disunited. Why? Because the youth have attacked their fellow youth. Therefore, youth are not united. That's mainstream media. Right? That is why we have other media. Right? So let me wrap here now. So I think Right? Class. So we are moving nicely. So we've already identified the problem of mainstream media. So now to attacka to other media that we can use. One such media is social media. Now, the government doesn't have control of social media because it's millions of people tweeting, Facebooking, Instagramming, and TikToking at the same time. They're not able to control it unless they shut it down. So what do they do? Now, because social media, they've not been able to control Facebook so much or Instagram or TikTok. But they've been able to control one. It's called X. Now, what happens in X is that there is a team of about 20 youth. Sometimes they are at Mudaba Center, sometimes they are at uh, KICC. All these 20 youth, each of them has about 30 X accounts. So in total, these 20 people have 600 X accounts. Now, these people they use these 600 accounts to spread propaganda and spin the narrative in the favor of what they want. One way they can do it is to discredit people who say the truth. For example, if I say the truth about a particular thing, they mark me. Then they look for something very frivolous or some propaganda. Then they use their 600 accounts to make it trend so that a Kenyan like you will not believe what I'm telling you because... They are taking away my credibility so that you don't trust me next time I tell you something. But the other media, they have not been able to control it. So this is social media. Also, you know, we can just call it digital media. Now, there's a lot we can do here because they've only managed to, call, to, you know, to control X. And that's not entirely. It's up to around, they've controlled X up to around 60%. They've been able to deal with it up to 60 but there's so much social media left there's tiktok there's fb there's ig and there's youtube and snapchat and many others how can you use this to cause change in your family or in your community you can record a video you can write something about change you can post a picture about change if you are a graphic designer, you can design something and post it on media. It will go viral. That's another way you can do civic education. Another way you can do civic education is organized. Organized campaign. Now, organized campaign is where a group of pastors come together and decide to go to Kirinyaga for a campaign to talk about bad governance. They might use a public address system or just meet and greet, you know, just meeting people and talking to them. The way Jehovah Witness wanafanyanga. A group of doctors can come together and form a group and go to Kitale to do civic education to the people of Kitale about healthcare or about anything else. A group of lawyers, you know, a group of farmers a group of student university campus students, just a group of people, like-minded people, doesn't have to be many. watano, kumi, my roommate, my beshte, my workmate, you go and do organized campaign for civic education. And it doesn't have to be through Morara or through an NGO or through the government. You can do this on your own. You don't need anybody else. 
All right? So organize campaign and many other ways of doing civic education. I can't talk about all of them in one video. Why is civic education important more than the protest? So now, ile swali mmekuwa mkijiuliza ni kwa nini tusiingie street sai mbona tufanye civic education kwanza ndio tusiingie streets. Let me tell you this. We have two options. One, to wait for 2027 and vote William Ruto out. This thing is very uncertain because Ruto can control IEBC by putting his people there. He can rig the ballot or he can kill opponents. He can do one of these three things and he will remain in power. This includes ile bill ya cherargea meleta to extend term. Ah, yeah. The other thing he can do is he can provoke the Kenyan public to do an uprising. So he can provoke Kenyans to do an uprising so that he declares a state of emergency. Hizi ni zile vitu anaweza fanya all to remain in power. And he is very capable. He has the money and he has the power and he has parliament and judiciary and many other institutions. So he is able to do it. So this 2027 is not a sure bet. We are not even sure whether that election is there because we are dealing with William Ruto. The second option we have is the streets. Now, if we go to the streets, we need to be not less We need to be not less than 1 million people. We need to be more than 1 million people in the streets and we are not going home until William Ruto leaves. For us to be achieve this more than 1 million people, that is where civic education comes in. 80% of Kenyans, they know something is wrong with Kenya. But when they see the young people going to the street to demonstrate against the government, they are like, ay, muna tu inconvenience. Mimi sasa mume block barabara, ningekuwa nimeenda job. Mume block barabara, ningekuwa nimeenda kwa biashara yangu. Hivyo leo sitauza. They don't know that if this government continues this way, they will not have a job and they will not have a business. So, we need to do civic education to them so that we achieve these numbers. Now, without 1 million people plus, kuendelea, 2 million, 3 million, without 1 million people and above in the streets, we should not go to the streets. Why? Death without gain. Let me write here. Death without gain. Now, wengi wenu meniambia, morara, tuite tu maandamano, tukoredi kuenda. We tuambie tusiku. Sisi tutatokezea. I know mnataka kutokezea. But nikipima hesabu zangu, nyinyi wenye mtatokezea amko wengi sana. Amjafika ile namba inahitajika. Ndio maana sijawaita. Mko willing lakini hamtoshi. Can you now take that energy yenye mko nayo ya kukuja kwa street muende mchukue wenzenu. That's why I went to Narok. I went to look for new ambassadors wenye wanaweza to join when we call for this so death without gain na manisha watu watakufa na tuta lose watu watauawa because ruto will use lethal force tapiga risasi wataabda tutafanya vitu mingi and i don't want to die without gain sitaki kufa kama sija chief chenye nataka kufanya that's why i don't want to die for free i want to die for something that's why i don't want to go to the streets without the numbers the numbers to achieve whatever has taken us to the streets. Alright. Now, 
to achieve these streets we've agreed we need civic education now the question i have to you my fellow kenyan today is this you have complained about the state of healthcare i have heard you you have complained about bad governance you have complained about agriculture you have complained about all these things my question is this are you willing to do something for change or do you just want to be a keyboard warrior always complaining on social media and in small gatherings are you ready to do the little as a government official are you willing to help by even just leaking some documents so that Kenyans can know how their money is getting lost. If you're willing to do something small towards this change, then I'm together with you. If you're not willing to do anything towards this, then I'm not with you. Thank you. See you in the next lesson.